and welcome to round three with Gift Storm. Uh, because we have the cantrip, we'll find what we need, especially because it's visions. Um, it's really easy for us to find the land, so that's a pretty clear keep to me. And we might be playing a mirror for all I know. Ship both of those because they're not all lands. Um, I hit the land, very lucky. And I fire a grape shot on that because just the way my hand is structured, if I just run the Electromancer out, it's likely it dies and then it, this could flip. I just, I need the time with this hand to start casting my spells, forcing my opponent to interact, doing all that stuff. I have all the pieces, I just need the time to deploy them. So my opponent goes for uh, some value snapping. And I get to have some fun. Which is 10 goblins of fun. Um, I get to cast this mid combo because it's just plus a spell. There's not really a difference in the order I cast them. And here we go. We have a counter up. Really not a ton that matters. I don't know if attacking with the barrels 100%. It's definitely 100% correct. Who am I kidding? My opponent could have things to pick off attackers. And they're not going to 18 me from three cards in hand here. Okay. Well, that was easy. Empty the Warrens. Just perfectly great magic card. Okay, for sideboarding, uh, I swapped out a bit of everything, um, specifically Grape Shot, uh, because I'm bringing in additional win conditions and then Faithless Looting. The reason for that was that I thought the Merchant Scroll would be a better interactive card because I'm finding Dispel with it. Or not better interactive, well, it's partly interactive, but partly also value. Um, against like interactive decks like Counterspell decks, and specifically Discard, Faithless Looting could be problematic because it puts you down another card. Um, I don't know if it necessarily applies. My opponent could have been Grixis Delver. It's hard to tell from the things they did game one. They might have just not had a black card or not wanted to do that. I don't... Eh, maybe they... It, they did fetch in non-black land, so maybe it was pretty obvious they weren't. Um, but, like, that's just kind of a default thing I do against these this style of deck. Possible another Reman could come out. Reman's not great against my opponents. Again, all chief spells, but it does act as, like, a... If I run out uh, gifts with mana up, I can reman my own gifts if they have a counter spell. Though I've already invested a decent amount of mana into that, uh, I usually probably would have had a ritual or something. So it's not, again, not perfect. Maybe another reman would be better off as a faithless looting here. Welcome to game two with Gift Storm. Uh, one thing I did not cover in sideboarding is that I did not board in Reckless Bushwhacker here. I think that having the dead card is bad, and I think that if I just make ten goblin tokens like game one, I don't know how my opponent wins. So, that is the reason for not going full combo. This hand does stuff pretty straightforward. Here, I'm going to fetch a basic to slight, um, just in case my opponent has like a Miser Blood Moon in their deck. Take the Morphos, uh, just more mana producers at this point. My opponent plays Pyromancer. I'm like, oh, what do I do? What? Do Wait, oh, this is just a turn two kill. Oh, great, have fun. Um, this is why we can't have nice things like additional rituals. So we make sure we have the extra red floating there. You want to have blue, red, red when you have that start where you go ritual, morphos, electromancer. Uh, we fire the other ritual. We fire the other ritual. Some stuff happens. Oh, wow, that's perfect. Um, we play this because I'm going to be casting Gifts and Pass in Flame, so I'm going to be making back the mana anyway, so it just adds one to Storm Count. Uh, I have three mana up, so I need to get Rituals here. I can actually get... Uh, because I have the second Electro in play, I can afford to get an Empty the Warrens in this stack which is a bit of a hedge against Surgical on, like, Gifts or something. Uh, they, like, I guess, yeah. So if I, 
Yeah, there's nothing they can surgical here at any point. So if they put passive flames in my graveyard and then I... Oh, no, they could actually. This doesn't beat surgical. They could give me ritual ritual and then I would be unable to get through this. Huh. I did not think about that. I don't think... Maybe there just isn't a way for me to beat surgical with the cards I have. I guess I could have gotten... Yeah, there isn't with only three mana up. Because if Passive Flames is in my graveyard, I need to flash it back for three mana. Yeah, I don't think there's anything I could have done to get around that. Oh well, but I don't get Surgical. My opponent has straight up nothing. I play my cards. Oh, no, I have the other gifts. I can gifts for... Oh, then I don't have Passive Flames? Yeah, I don't think I could do anything there. Yeah, I don't know. A bunch of stuff happens. At this point, we're just in overkill mode. I will eventually uh, get a... Oh, they drew a Dispel. Great, my opponent can now do officially nothing. Um, I will eventually find a Grape Shot for my library with Dispel backup, and my opponent will die. Uh, and they can see the game once I do so. Great. Uh, again, this is why we can't have Seething Song. Otherwise, you will just die on turn two even more than happens normally. Just that critical mass of rituals is really just what sets you off and puts you over the edge. I think that actually Seeding Song might even be more dangerous now that you have Barrel and Electromancer. Because it's never the card you really wanted with it, Pyromancer. Um, yeah, that was nice. Just turn two kills. Always the greatest.